Good morning. And what I want to do is go through a piece of work that I'm engaged in at the moment, which is around a P4 runtime controlled UPF. Um, and I'll explain the, the motivation behind that. So first off, let me go through exactly what P4 uh, is. It's a domain specific language to define a data pipeline. Um, and what it means is you can define that data pipeline right down to the uh, bits and bytes level in terms of protocol headers. So unlike other data pipelines and other descriptions, uh, you're not impinged by the existing format of the, the packet. Uh, you're not impinged by the existing protocol. Um, so once you've actually defined your entire packet flow or packet build or frame build, you can then program that down onto the switch or onto the ASIC um, or into a software model. Um, typically on P4, and we're talking about P4.16, so if you hear about P4.14 as well, that's the forerunner to, to current P4, um, everything now is built around P4.16. Um, typically once that's programmed, that's a for purpose switch. So once you've, you've programmed that into the, uh, into the target, that's, uh, that's it. The only way that you can change the actions within that pipeline on P4 is by recompiling and reinstalling um, the pipeline that you've, you've defined. So what's happened with P4 runtime is the ability to change parts of that pipeline programming in real time. So you can think of this as a, a double control plane. So there's a control plane in terms of defining the data plane in the P4 language, which defines what happens to the, the frames in flight through the infrastructure. Um, and P4 runtime is then an external RPC, gRPC based um, protocol that enables me to modify parts of that pipeline that I have defined to be modifiable. So it's a broader um, control plane into my, uh, into my data plane than say traditional control planes such as OpenFlow uh, because I get the ability to actually define what I want to happen at that packet level and then expose part of that through P4 runtime um, for modification in flight. Uh, and what this, this means is that I can program um, my, my switch or my ASIC once with a P4 program, exposing parts of that P4 program um, to P4 runtime. I can have an external actor then, so that's an, a, a P4 runtime client, that enables me to change the operation of that pipeline in flight. So if you look at the traditional ways of doing this, um, this P4 runtime, P4 as a combination is uh, target independent, but it is also pipeline independent um, and protocol independent, unlike OpenFlow or um, switch abstraction. So both of those will be using um, pipelines that have been predefined and protocols that have been predefined. In terms of both P4 and P4 runtime, I have the ability now to consider something other than a traditional or an existing protocol that's been defined in, say, OpenFlow. Um, and this can move me into the sphere where I'm looking at uh, potentially taking a, a non-IP protocol through my UPF in a 5G environment um, and being able to modify the pipeline of that non-IP protocol from the same control plane and in the same manner as I would with an IP-based pipeline. There's um, some uh, activities uh, around under Open Network uh, Linux to create Stratum. Um, Stratum is a, a package of programs that runs on a number of both um, uh, open source silicon, NICs, and within a model. So this is the BMV2 model uh, within, within Linux. Um, and this provides me, Stratum is a package that does not only the, the P4 data pipeline, but it also enables the P4 runtime programmability. And it exposes two other um, interfaces as well. So GNMI for configuration and GNOI for um, operations and telemetry. So if I take the Stratum package compiled under Open, Net, under open Network Linux, and run Open Network Linux on any one of a number of open platforms, I get effectively an entire P4 uh, runtime solution that also gives me the configuration and operation that I need. And that's the client side on the white box switch. In terms of actually the server side, if I look at the client side, the client side is then based around ONOS. ONOS is, is highly extensible, already has NetConf, already has OpenFlow. P4 runtime becomes another protocol plugin to the base of ONOS. And what that means is that my existing applications that are currently using ONOS to control OpenFlow um, 
assets can then be used to program P4 runtime assets without any change. However, because P4 runtime is richer in terms of protocol definition than, than OpenFlow is, I can then extend those applications to enable me to build non-OpenFlow constrained applications within a P4 switch and program them in P4 runtime. So my applications have some level of portability across that. Obviously, I can't take any aspect of a P4 runtime capability and put that into an existing OpenFlow um, configuration, but certainly in terms of, of managing an infrastructure comprised of both OpenFlow, P4 runtime, NetConf, and, and any other protocol I may have in there, Onos provides this, this single view. Um, and what happens is that the individual switch or a fabric manufacturer, silicon manufacturers, will provide a device driver that abstracts me between the Onos definition and the P4 runtime definition. So Onos then becomes my next generation SDN controller um, because it's able to see all these assets across the entire network. Moving on a little bit further, um, Stratum, the combination of Onos and Stratum has been built into a project called Trellis. Um, Trellis provides service provider grade leaf spine applications running on top of Onos and then in combination with white box switches running over DPA and P4 runtime provides some of the applications uh, that you would typically see in a service provider environment. So for example, segment routing um, or, or multicast replication. Um, what happens next is moving that forward into a UPF environment within a 5G core. Um, and again, this is running on top of a number of, of different hardware vendors, uh, the typical ones, Barefoot, to, uh, Tofino, and Mellanox Spectrum. They would provide um, a, an abstraction into Onos that enables me to write the application once and deploy across multiple um, switch fabrics. So for example, I can take my fabric.p4, which provides the basic segment routing and the, the multicast, um, and by having a combination of the Tofino drivers and the Spectrum drivers, I can then deploy that onto any white box switch. And as far as Onos is concerned, it, it doesn't care. It just sees a P4 runtime capable application running uh, within a white box switch. So why, why am I doing this? Um, well, what I'm looking at is offloading part of the UPF performance in a typical 5G core. Um, and if I look at where I am with the, the current work, um, we have a, a white box switch running the stratum, running the, the, the uh, trellis combination of ONOS and stratum, um, and then a landslide traffic generator connected at 40 gigabits per second, emulating uh, a number of GNode Bs and UEs. And the plan here is to, to try and exercise this environment and work out what the, uh, the, the difference is between putting my traffic through a software-based UPF, uh, which is shown in the top left-hand corner based on free 5G core components and a hardware UPF, where I'm able to actually use P4 runtime to make decisions about how traffic would flow. Would it avoid the UPF? Would it switch through the UPF? And what's the implication of doing that? So in a 40 gig environment, and moving towards a 100 gig environment, which is typically what we would like to see from a G node B into an aggregation point on a 5G network, where are the limitations? Where do I hit issues when I'm talking about a, a UPF running in a VNF? And how do I overcome that with a combination of software and hardware capabilities? So the first case would be simply using the traffic generator um, in, in the standard way. The, the free 5G core uh, components um, from, from the University in Taiwan are uh, in a sliced environment, so they're fully sliced, they're, they're um, fully 5G compliant uh, and very functional. So I have a number of these UPFs running under separate, um, separate N4 connections. My first case simply takes traffic um, through the environment through the switch as standard IP routing um, and puts it through the UPF just to see what's going on. And in this instance, I have uh, the UPF running in a, in a bare metal environment, but under control of a core, which itself is running, uh, in this case, in an open stack environment, but it could be in any, any virtualized environment because there's a, an N4 connection between the UPF and the core. Um, we've already done some work um, using the UPF in a virtualized environment again, in an open stack environment and also in a containerized environment, showing that there's a slight degradation in terms of throughput as you go 
into the, the virtualized environment. So we know that there's somewhat of a tax that you pay as you go into this, this virtual environment. And we want to see how close to 40 gigs we can actually approach um, generating traffic in this environment. So in this environment, the GTP tunnels are, are terminated in exactly the same way as they would be through a, through a normal virtualized um, UPF um, within the UPF itself. Uh, there's, there's no impact in terms of, of performance through the switch. This is just uh, you know, wire speed through the, through the device. In the second instance, what, what we're doing is actually using the ONOS controller to program interception on the GTP tunnels um, within the switch itself. Uh, and that means that essentially the, the, the switch appears as a, as a new slice. Um, there's some questions about how do we actually determine how that traffic will be switched through this environment. Is there some way that we would look at the context of the data and say, well, I, I know that I have a data here that, that doesn't actually care about the performance, so therefore it's going to go through the software UPF, or do I actually worry about um, a service level, in which case I take it through the, the hardware UPF? And there's some movement within Trellis and within the Stratum project to redefine some of those in a 5G environment. I'll talk about some of this in a, in a minute. Um, essentially, at the moment, we don't have that granularity um, in the protocol. So the only way that I can determine how that gets switched is through um, slice selection. So I have a single slice that goes through the software UPF, a second slice that goes through the hardware UPF. It would be nice to be able to look at that traffic in more granularity and decide that maybe I have um, specific flows of traffic that need to maybe split in different ways or um, depending on, on what you need to do with that traffic, maybe um, to, to service chain that off to somewhere else um, that I would be able to do that. Um, I'm talking about N3 and N6 here. Um, that second interface could be an N9 interface, which takes me into a service chain onto another device. Unfortunately, at the moment, the, the landslide traffic generator doesn't fully support uh, an N9 interface, but there's no reason why you couldn't see a chain of these hardware and software UPFs interconnected with, with N9. So the, the key to this is building an API between the, the ONOS controller and the core. Um, the, the core is, is talking PFCP um, into, uh, into the UPF, that's defined interface within 5G, um, but the ONOS controller needs a RESTful connection from something. So essentially building these, these um, flows and, um, and putting the flows into the controller to enable them to be put into uh, P4 runtime is, is the key to this. Um, now, one of the concerns obviously was that as each session is created within the core, I need to insert, insert a GTP tunnel uh, onto the hardware. This is quite slow moving. Typically, the GTP tunnels don't move very quickly. It would be as a, as a UE moves onto a, a different Geno B or potentially onto a different anchor point. So there, there's no real concern about the speed of um, being able to, to build uh, GTP tunnels, although that is something that we'd need to think about in the, in the future. Um, the data is being handled down in the core, and the, the goal for this is to look at uh, what, what's the maximum speed we can achieve through the core. Um, can we make sure that we have a, a, a split between software and hardware? Um, another element of work to look at would be to look at the architecture and the, the rollout of um, the ONOS controller compared to where the core, the N4 PFCP is, and decide what's the implication of maybe latency in that control plane on my ability to set up these tunnels. And there's a couple of, of um, elements we can look at. For example, do I set up tunnels in advance? Do I think about some kind of predictive um, setup for, for UEs? Do I decide that some UEs are highly mobile and therefore I need to have predetermined tunnels? Or do I work on some sort of stimulus where I decide that um, you know, my, my UE is, is moving and therefore I'll take a hit in terms of performance going through a software UPF before I um, before I'm able to say, well, I'll, I'll put this in an optimum path and, and leave it in the suboptimal path. What's the impact for that? Again, that's going to be determined by the use case and the service level uh, for each element. We, we would need to look at data context in, in that environment. So ONOS uses the, the RESTful API and I'm uh, inserting the both the forward and reverse path, which either adds or removes the GTP um, tunnel for the for the data in flight. Um, 
the way that this is done with, with ONOS is by the pipe configurations, uh, which are built from Stratum. Um, those are inserted into the, into the switch, um, and I register that client application. So every switch is seen as a P4 runtime um, device within, within ONOS, um, and I have the, the, the pipelines available to exercise uh, within both the, the forward and reverse path on the, on the uh, N3 link. Um, in our environment, we have the edge core uh, running the uh, P4-based stratum. So this is the Tofino-based switches. Again, you could use Mellanox-based switches. And it's exactly the same. You simply take their pipe config, uh, compile that against current ONOS, and insert that in. Now, there are some, some interesting things happening. The, the version, uh, you'll notice, it says SPGW here. Um, some of this work goes back to pre-5G um, uh, definitions within the UPF. So actually, a lot of what's happening here is GTP termination, GTP encapsulation and, de and decapsulation, um, which is then moved forward into 5G. The next version of ONOS and the next version of Stratum will have some of the deeper level of 5G elements in, um, such as the, the ability to look at QoS um, and queuing within the switch itself. That's not available as yet. It was it was due to be available last month, but it's uh, it's running a bit late at the moment. So the initial um, tests so far, taking a 40 gigabit per second environment and running a, a very typical iMix traffic profile around this link. So this is the, the first use case going through the software UPF, um, running in bare metal, optimized on 40 gigabits per second. Um, we're seeing something around a 6.8 gigabit per second um, maximum throughput um, whatever offered load that we, we add on here. And that's roughly in line with what we've seen in, um, in other uh, software-based UPFs. Um, and again, this is, this is coming down to the, um, the, the Linux kernel, the throughput ability, and the ability to insert and delete GTP um, within, within the software. Um, it would be interesting to see how this works in other environments as well, but this is in line with what we've seen on some service chaining um, uh, tests that we've done before in terms of, of multiple UPFs uh, and connections between N3 and N, N9, eventually coming out in N6. And, and this is pretty uh, reproducible. So about six to seven gigabits, but 6.8 to seven gigabits per second. Uh, and we will see this, this start to top out. So the next steps, which is actually underway at the moment, is to take these GTP entries, um, push them into hardware, and the test the throughput. And so far, uh, with the tests that are happening at the moment, we've got a 4 gig uh, offered load and a 3.9 gig throughput. So fingers crossed that it's actually looking um, that this is going to be more linear than the software version. Um, then beyond that, uh, the next stage to look at is how do we determine what, which traffic goes in in which direction. There's, there's several options here. If you think of a, a GNode B rollout, they would be aggregated to a number of different anchor points. Um, and each anchor point in this instance becomes the hardware switch or the software UPF. So as you, your GNode B moves through different anchor points and aggregation points in the network, you need to take a decision about how I, I deal with the anchor point and the movement of the anchor point across there. One option is simply to push back to a software UPF and then have the software utilize that through a hardware um, function if it needs to. But obviously, there's a hit then in terms of, of traffic performance, loading on the UPF, um, deterministic performance of the entire network. The other option is to, to be slightly more predictive about this. And, and you could take prediction in, in several levels. So you could look at this and say, well, the chance of my UE moving GenoB is to an adjacent GenoB. Therefore, that GenoB is connected to a different aggregation point. Um, and I've got one of maybe five directions and five aggregation points I could move in. So I would then set up those GTP tunnels um, in advance on those, on those aggregation points. And then as I move through the infrastructure, I would simply move my pool of aggregation points, creating and destroying GTP tables as I go. That's quite wasteful in terms of resources for GTP tunnels. It also throws another problem in terms of how do I get the traffic in and out of the environment. If I've only got a single attachment point to the entire mobile network, to the rest of the internet, 
that really doesn't make any sense. I might as well just flow it back to the original point. If I've got multiple attachment points, I then need to think about what else do I need to do? And again, because ONOS has a view of the entire infrastructure, maybe we can see the, the ONOS view of the UPFs um, tied with an ONOS or a controller view of the attachment points to the internet. And I then make a decision about how I'm going to route traffic into my into my termination point for the network. So for example, I could be on one aggregation point connected to one internet uh, peering point. As I move, I, I change the peering point, but I then also update the addressing and I update the flows such that I can I, um, I, I keep that session uh, optimal in terms of connectivity to either the local environment or the um, or the internet. The other side of that is I can then start to think about where my content caches are deployed uh, and making sure that I have some prediction in terms of um, ability to connect to a content cache within that environment. Again, I can I can pre um, preload content on there based on a prediction, but it, it, it's it's wasteful in terms of um, a bit of resources to do that. So we may decide that that's not the best one. The other side of this is keeping up with Stratum ONOS developments. Um, this moves very very fast. So for example, if I look at the uh, current limitations on this, I have a maximum number of, of table entries of a 1,024 GTP um, connections. That's not enough for the for the large size network. Um, I have issues with the um, anchoring implications. I say incomplete should be incomplete. Sorry about that. Uh, the current code for the uh, SPGW, if you take current fabric.p4 code, it doesn't work. So there's been quite a lot of work to, to recompile and rewrite that uh, just to make it work for GTP. However, Trellis is, is moving very soon uh, to support full PFCP. Um, so they'll be implementing packet detection and forwarding action rules at POS. However, they're only, in, they're only implementing the, the native part of this. If you actually want to exercise any of this, we have to write the applications on top of that. So there's a lot of work in, in working out what other information are we getting from the core of the network across PFCP and, and how does that get built into a descriptor, which then gets pushed to ONOS, that then gets pushed to, to Stratum. So the plan is to, to keep up to track with this and contribute some, um, some work back into, uh, into Stratum uh, and potentially back into the, the wider Trellis project. Um, but really this at the moment is about ensuring that we have the, the um, ability to control the, the, the 5G UPF from PFCP. Um, I've got six minutes and that I think I'll uh, stop and take some questions. Mm -hmm.